Welcome, my name is André Boer and I'd like to tell you something about multiphase flow measurement by magnetic resonance. Before we start, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the content of this presentation, uh, as it consists of five blocks. Um, I'd like to start with a short introduction, uh, telling you about uh, the new features about this magnetic resonance uh, multiphase uh, flow measurement instrument. Furthermore, in block two, I'd like to tell you something about multiphase flow measurement, as it is not even so straightforward, and uh, I'd like to show you a little bit more about the dynamics uh, involved with uh, multiphase flow measurement. Chapter 3 will be something about magnetic resonance itself, the measurement principle and how we use it uh, in this uh, particular flow measurement uh, instrument. And of course in 4 we will show you something a little bit more about an application, as it's not only just in theory, not only just in laboratory, but yes, we have also installed this instrument already on uh, a real uh, live oil well. And finally, in five, we will repeat a little bit what we have uh, discussed in the first four blocks, and uh, obviously also an outlook, as this is a completely new type of measurement um, principle. And of course, there are a lot of uh, future possibilities and, and uses uh, for magnetic resonance uh, in flow measurement, but also in analytics. So magnetic resonance multiphase, well, um, it's a measurement principle which is actually quite new and um, it uh, works very well with all those um, uh, matters, all those liquids, uh, gases that contain hydrogen um, uh, molecules, hydrogen protons. I will show you a little bit later on that. Uh, well, once you have that, um, it is a, a very nice and elegant way of measuring a multiphase uh, uh, flow. Because it's a single measurement principle uh, to measure this multiphase flow, and it doesn't need any nuclear source or anything like that, which is uh, in many cases uh, nowadays uh, necessary. Um, by using magnetic resonance, also an inline fluid characterization can be done, which means that you can install the instrument, you don't need any further uh, parameterization or, or any uh, calibration, and you can actually characterize the liquid that is going through it, or uh, gas that is going through it, uh, by the instrument itself. The flow meter has a very large dynamic range uh, with a scale of uh, 1 to 60 even. It's a full bore design, there's no moving parts inside or anything protruding inside the pipe. So it's a very elegant way of measuring multiphase flow. And obviously as we really look at the individual components, it can detect um, multiple components uh, even if these components are in individual phases. So, uh, whether it is in gas or, or in a liquid phase, it doesn't really matter. It can be detected by this type of instrument. But before we go on, I'd like to tell you a little bit more about multiphase flow measurement itself. If you look at multiphase flow, it is often depicted in a, a graph as you see here in front of you where uh, on the left-hand side, on the vertical axis, you'll see the superficial liquid velocity, and on the horizontal axis, you can see the superficial gas velocity. And what you will see is that depending on the individual velocities of the liquid and the gas, a certain flow regime can uh, occur. And let's start with uh, a flow regime that is typically there when the flow velocities are quite low. It is called the stratified flow regime. This is very nice because uh, at our factory in Holland, in Dordrecht, we have built uh, a small uh, calibration rig um, that is actually capable of demonstrating these individual flow regimes uh, in, in a multi-phase uh, uh, area. So here you will actually see the stratified flow regime. It doesn't really uh, look dynamic eh? because what you typically see is on the bottom part of the pipe you see the liquid flowing and on the top part of the pipe you actually see the gas flowing. There's not much interaction between the two and it's a very stable, not really dynamic way of, uh, of transport of both the, the fluids. However, when you increase, for example, the liquid velocity, um, the flow regime changes. It changes from this uh, rather not so dynamic uh, stratified into a more dynamic plug type of flow. And you see already what's happening. You see the transport of the individual fluids. Um, there's more interaction. You see now plugs of gas uh, flowing through the pipe. And obviously 
trying to measure this is already uh, quite a challenge. But it can even be worse, because if you further increase the gas and the liquid velocity, you come into a regime that is uh, commonly known as the slug flow regime. And here, when you take a look at uh, what's happening there, you see bigger parts of slugs uh, of uh, oil are being pushed through the pipe and uh, the dynamics of these kinds of uh, uh, flow regimes. Well, that's really challenging for a good flow measurement. So keep that in mind when you think about uh, the use of a magnetic resonance uh, measurement principle on these kinds of uh, multi-phase uh, flows. So first of all, let's have a look at uh, what is really magnetic resonance. Well, if you take a look at it, uh, our first application, as I already said, will be in the oil and gas industry. And typically what we are measuring there is a, a mixture of water, oil and gas natural gas. And all these individual components, they uh, have uh, a, a hydrogen mm -hmm. atom uh, attached to the molecular structure. And when you look in detail at the hydrogen atom, you will see it consists of a proton and an electron. And the proton itself has a spin, so it's moving. And because of that moving spin, the proton actually has a magnetic moment. And, and that is a special thing, because the proton acts like a small magnet, you could say, um, you can interact with it. That means when you put this proton and the entire molecule it is attached to in a strong magnetic field, you can interact with it by applying high frequency pulses. And as a result uh, of these exposure to high frequency pulses, the protons will send out uh, a signal. And that signal tells us something about which uh, molecule this proton is attached to. So in fact, by doing that, we can find out later on whether it's a proton that was part of a water molecule, a natural gas molecule, or an oil molecule. How do we use that to measure flow? Well, here you see a picture of the flow meter. And, um, just look at the blue block that is moving through uh, the, the scheme here from left to right. In the block you see all those hydrogen protons randomly distributed, but when they are exposed to an external magnetic field, you see that they start to align along the field lines of that external magnetic field. In this part you see that we actually excite those protons, and after being excited the protons will send back an RF signal, which we can pick up. And as I said, the, by means of these RF signals, we can actually detect and learn more about where those protons were attached to. But let's have a look at the flow measurement itself. Assume that all the protons are aligned according to the magnetic field. We can tag certain protons in the measurement section by sending out a special RF pulse first. Every next RF pulse we are questioning the number of protons that are tagged inside that measurement section. And what you see here is that less and less tagged protons will still be in the measurement section because there's flow. In other words, the amplitude, as you see depicted here, will decrease by time. And actually, this decreasing amplitude will tell us something about the flow velocity of these tagged um, hydrogen protons. In other words, all the liquid and uh, gas that is inside that measurement section. Because we know the length of the measurement section and we know the time it takes before all the um, protons, the tagged protons, to flow out, which is actually there at the TS is zero time, we have the possibility to calculate the flow velocity, as you see in the formula here. It's not just uh, the time it takes for these tagged um, protons to flow out of the measurement section that we need to measure the velocity, but also its initial amplitude. Eh? When we tag a certain uh, volume of these protons, we look at the amplitude of the received signals after that. And this amplitude is actually a measure of the fluid fraction and how is that? Well, take a look at this picture. When the complete cross-section of the measurement section would have been filled with liquid, we know what the signal would have been, because liquids tend to give a very strong signal back. However, it wasn't. Part of the cross-section of the measurement section 
was filled with liquid, which is the measurement, uh, the mixture of oil and water. And some part wasn't there because that was gas. So actually, the missing amplitude corresponds to the gas fraction. So now, next to having measured the velocity of all the components in the measurement section, we have also the possibility, by looking at the signal amplitude, to establish how much of the measurement section was actually filled with liquid, the mixture of oil and water. In this slide, we show how we detect between oil and water. And here we use the relaxation time. And the relaxation time is the time how fast the hydrogen protons are aligned according to the magnetic field. And specifically for oil, as you can see here in the animation, oil hydrogen protons align really fast. So when we have a very short magnetic route, which we have here, um, we only get signals back from the oil hydrogen protons because only they are aligned. The water hydrogen protons are not aligned yet. In the next measurement phase, as you can see here, we have switched on more magnets. So the magnetization time is much longer, giving also the water protons the possibility to align and, once exposed to high frequency waves, they actually also send signals back. So when we do the measurement now, we not only get signals back from the oil protons, but also from the water protons. So now we are measuring the velocity of both, whereas in the very first animation, we only were measuring the velocity of the oil. So here, repeating it a little bit, because it was quite a lot, eh? When we have only the main magnet on, as you can see in the top picture, we only measure the oil, because the oil hydrogen protons align very fast in the magnetic field. And exposing those aligned protons to an RF field gives you the signals from the oil protons only. In the picture below, you see that we have switched on three additional magnets, on the left side of the main magnet, allowing both the water and the oil protons to be exposed to the magnetic field much longer. And therefore, also the water protons, having these longer relaxation time, are also aligned. And when now uh, we expose the liquid to RF pulses, we get signals back from both the oil and the water. And that's why we measure uh, the total velocity of both of them now. And of course, having these two signals, once just from oil, and now also for oil and water, we can derive what the individual velocities were. Difficult thing is the gas velocity measurement, eh? because you saw the gas uh, gives you very small signals. So we have to take a look at the gas velocity itself. And fortunately, as uh, maybe you know from uh, MRIs in the hospital, you can also do an imaging and that's also what we do here. In the cross section you see now here, we can actually look for the velocities per small slice. And that's actually what we do. We can divide up the cross section of that pipe into 16 individual slices and we, we can repeat the measurements we did before. So now we can measure the velocity per slice, but also the amplitude per slice. And that gives us an enormous amount of information about what is inside that pipe happening. Because what you will see at the top part of the pipe, you will see typically high velocity measurements and low amplitude, indicating that in the top part of the pipe we have the gas present. In the midsection you will see higher amplitudes and definitely lower velocities, and even lower in the pipe you'll see further lower um, velocities and, and a similar type of amplitudes. So by doing this uh, imaging, by doing this slicing, we can actually find out how much gas was in the cross-section and at what velocity the gas was actually flowing. And we can do the same thing for the oil and the water. So just looking back at the previous sheets, you see that we actually have four steps that we take to find out the individual velocities, but also the individual fractions. 
And that's what we need both to finally determine the individual flow volumes going through the pipe. So first of all, we use this method of convective decay to measure the liquid velocity. You remember we were exposing uh, the liquid hydrogen protons to uh, RF pulses and every time we got a bit smaller amplitude back until finally we didn't get any received signal anymore. This is this convective decay method that we can use to establish the velocity of the liquid mixture inside the pipe. By changing the magnetic length, we could find out what of this liquid the oil part was and the water part was, and also what the oil velocity and the water velocity was. By looking at the amplitude of the signal, we could find out what's the liquid inside the pipe, what's the fraction of the liquid inside the pipe, and what is the fraction of gas inside the pipe. And finally, by doing this imaging, we could actually make slices through the cross-section of the pipe and find out exactly what is the gas velocity. In total, what have we determined and what do we need to determine to find out the individual um, flow rates of the individual components inside the pipe is, of course, we need to know the fraction of oil, gas and water. And yes, we know them now. And we need to know the velocity of oil, gas and water. And yes, we do know that too. So combining the fractions and the velocities will actually give us the flow rates, the individual flow rates of water, oil and gas. And that's exactly what we want. And this, of course, is valid for any mixture of multiphase flows containing these three fractions, water, oil and gas. And yes, you saw the multiphase uh, flow regimes and you saw the flow dynamics of it. It's also possible to do it in practice under those very dynamic conditions. So having seen this in theory, um, it's nice, I think, to have a look at uh, the actual application. And as I said before, the application actually is one on an actual oil well. What you see here is a picture, uh, an aerial view of a site in Rotterdam, where um, a number of oil wells, uh, close to slightly over 20 oil wells, are coming together. These oil wells, as you can see in a similar picture on the right-hand side, they come together in a production manifold, and from the production manifold they go into a separator where the individual phases are separated out. Obviously, uh, in this big separator tank on the top part you will find gas, in the middle part you'll find the oil, and at the lower part you actually find then the water that comes out of all these oil wells. The challenge the oil companies have is to uh, try and find out uh, all these individual oil wells that make up the total of the oil field. How do they produce? Um, is in a single oil well the water content higher than in another oil well? And would it, for example, make sense to shut down one of these oil wells because of the high water content? So the demand comes up more and more to measure the individual oil wells. And that's, of course, where a multiphase flow meter fits in very nicely. Here, zooming in a little bit, you can see actually where um, the MR multiphase flow meter has been installed in the installation. And here, even more in detail, you see the instrument uh, being in place. Well, we've learned quite a lot. It's been in place since uh, November 2014, so it's, it's uh, almost more than a year already uh, where we have experience uh, with this meter. Um, we learned, for example, that uh, it can be installed like any other um, device in, in, in the pipeline. It takes about half an hour to install. We've been able uh, to check the parameterization um, uh, online, so the, uh, the meter does its own uh, liquid uh, characterization and also that, for example, worked uh, really nice. And we saw also different ambient conditions eh? from the winter in Holland uh, throughout the summer, it, it worked really well. On the right side you see actually uh, what kind of flows you, uh, you may expect. Um, uh, we monitored the test separator, so that is actually your reference eh, in the test separator, a small tank. Uh, the phases are separated out and by individual, single phase flow measurement, the phases are being uh, monitored and measured. 
And on the bottom part of that uh, graph, you actually see the flow output of the multiphase uh, uh, MR flow meter. You see also the dynamics of it, eh? because it's not only the flow rates that are changing uh, from these individual wells, but it is also the flow composition that is changing. So it's really, uh, these uh, oil well applications are, are really typically very um, demanding applications with respect to uh, the dynamics of the flow meter and also the rangeability of the individual flow rates uh, of the flow meter. And fortunately, the MR flow meter is really well suited for that. So let's have a look at the future. Well, um, as you can see, magnetic resonance flow meters are, uh, are being used for multi-phase uh, um, uh, flow uh, measurement uh, right now. It can be done and we are seeing an increasing demand for it. Uh, there's a lot of interest from the market, so yeah, we are trying to, uh, to keep up with that. As I said, uh, it's a, it, the meter has a large dynamic range. Um, it's a very elegant uh, measurement principle as one single measurement can be used to measure the individual phases. There's no radioactive source necessary. It has a full bore design as you can see on the, on the picture on the right hand side. We've designed it first of all to be used in the oil and gas industry upstream directly at the oil well measuring this oil, water and natural gas uh, mixer, multi-phase mixture. And that's what we are aiming at right now. But Obviously, we will not stop there because we also see a lot of possibilities uh, in the future. Uh, for example, if you look at the chemical industry, also they can benefit uh, very well from uh, magnetic resonance. As we see, there is a, a, a lot of um, applications where there are hydrogen-based molecules um, at stake, where, of course, flow measurement can be done, but also where MR can be used to detect individual component in these multiple phases, uh, whether it be liquid or gas, it doesn't really play a role. And obviously, uh, I think a lot of possibilities are by looking looking at the uh, imaging uh, features, imaging possibilities of magnetic resonance, uh, where by now we just do um, a one-dimensional slicing, but in future, of course, you can also think about a two-dimensional pixel type of information over the cross-section, which I guess can be giving very uh, nice information about distribution and about the uh, processes that are taking place in the cross-section of a pipe. With it, this, I would like to um, thank you for your attention and conclude the presentation on multi-phase MR flow measurement. Thank you.